Okay, guys, so this is your short biography of people who did, uh, um, of ordinary people who did extraordinary things for God, uh, unordinary things for God. I don't know if that's a word, but anyway. All right, so today is um, um, October the 10th, 2021. All right, I got to fix that. I wrote the wrong date. And today's short biography is on Brother Lawrence, The Habit of Holiness. Brother Lawrence, born in 1611, died in 1691, was born Nicholas Herman, a poor peasant from Lorraine, France. At age 18, his poverty compelled him to join the army for the promise of regular meals and a small stipend. He, he fought in the Thirty Years' War, one of the most destructive conflicts in European history. During these difficult times, days, Lawrence underwent a profound spiritual awakening. As he looked upon a gaunt, leafless tree in the dead of winter, the thought that in a short time the bare branches would again be covered with life, life filled with, with life filled him with a high view of the providence and power of God. It was from that moment that he began experiencing a deep love for God. Eventually, the young man found his way to a monastery in Paris, taking the name Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection. His lack of education prevented him from becoming a priest, so he was assigned the, the menial duties of a lay brother, first working in the community's kitchens, then making sandals with his, with his help, then making, let me read that again. His lack of education prevented him from becoming a priest, so he was assigned the menial duties of a lay brother, first working in the community's kitchens, then making sandals, when his help prevented him from continuing his for former work. During his years of service at the monastery, Lawrence developed a keen sensitivity to God's holy presence in everyday life. His description of what he called a habitual, silent, secret conversation with God was recorded in a collection of writings published posthumously as the practice of the presence of God. I'm sorry, guys. The dogs are playing with the toy. The time of business does not. The time of business does not with me differ from the time of prayer. Wait. Quote. The time of business does not with me differ from the time of prayer. End quote. Lawrence wrote. Quote, in the noise and clatter of my kitchen while several persons are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in as great tranquility as if I were upon my knees at the blessed sacrament. Amen. Lawrence made every moment a loving encounter with his Lord. He found fulfillment not in extraordinary achievements, but in quiet experience of God's grace during the ordinary task of life. Quote, it and then in brackets, is not and needed that we should have great things to do, he, re he remarked. We can do little things for God. I turn the cake that is frying on the pan for love of him, he added. Men invent means and methods of coming at God's love. They learn rules and set up devices to remind them of that love, and it seems like a world of trouble trying trouble to bring oneself into the consciousness of God's presence. Yet it might be so simple. It is not quicker and easier just to do our common business wholly for the love of him. Wait, wait, wait. It, is it not quicker and easier just to do our common business wholly for the love of him? Question, uh, end quote. This humble servant of the Lord also sensed the return of his love in a description reminiscent of the parable of the prodigal son. <clears throat> and this is... Uh, uh, this... Yeah, okay. I I imagine myself as, as the most wretched of all, full of sores and sins, and one who has committed all sorts of crimes against the, his king. Feeling a deep sorrow, I confess to him all my sins. I ask his forgiveness, and I abandon myself into his hands so that he may do with me what he pleases. This king, full of mercy and goodness, very far from chast chastening me, embraces me with love, invites me to feast at his table, serves me with his own hands, and gives me the key to his treasures. He converses with me and takes delight in me and treats me as if I were his favorite. This is how I imagine myself from time to time in his holy presence. Amen. Brother Lawrence did not seek to attain holiness for his own sake. 
Rather, he sought God and was raised to holiness as he was transformed into a dwelling place for God's holy presence. Great deeds and sacred ritual are never worthless, are, are never worthless. But what, what brother, what, but what Brother Lawrence might say is that their holiness derives from their expression of one simple truth. There is a God who loves us. Let us welcome his embrace. Guys, that was, uh, that was a good one. Um, the, you know, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to be joyful and whenever, you know, you're under attack. So, I, listen, if you're under attack, and we're all under attack, but if, if uh, Satan is working on your mind that um, you're not worthy, you're not, if, if he's attacking you saying, you know, your sins are too many or your sins are too bad and you're not worthy, you rebuke him. Um, rebuke him in the name of Jesus because <clears throat> every person on this earth right now is a um, creation from God and that's not easy to uh, swallow whenever you're faced with your adversaries and like what we're facing right now in um, the uh, in our country and it's not just our country guys it's the world too and this isn't just, uh, this is not a battle of, uh, of one political party to another political party. This is a good versus evil party uh, battle. And um, so as our, our, our job as believers are to um, stay in God's word, pray, pray. Pray every day for God's will in your life and not our own. And, you know, and uh, ask for strength to uh, to walk the path that he has laid before you. It's not easy, guys. If I, if I sat here and told y'all it was easy, I would be lying to you. It's not easy. But the more you practice it, um, the more you read your word, the more you pray, you don't have to rely on your, your strength. You rely on God's strength. So, the best thing you could do is just get you a Bible. Pray to God, Lord, teach me to understand the scriptures. Tell me the way that you want me to learn. For you, it may be different from me. But what we all have to do, though, is we all have to read it. So, pray to God for discernment and for wisdom. And it will come. Um... You know, I, that's my best advice to you guys. But anyway, um, no, not but. Anyway, um, I hope you guys have a beautiful Sunday. And um, I'm praying for each and every one of you um, that God's will be done in your life. And um, that God, uh, that, you, you, that you choose him to be first in your life. We have to quit choosing people and quit choosing you know the in group quit choosing political sides quit all that the the restoration of our country will be through god and president uh or 40 45 said last night i guess we got to redo the slogan make america great again again but i thought of this and i actually uh sent it to my friend uh uh, Sister V, because nobody, I was writing it in the chat, but and then before long somebody already copied it. But I think we should do MAGA, make America godly again. All right. So when you hear that, you tell them, you know what, Sister Michelle, she's already said that she came up with that. God gave me that one right in the middle of the chat. Make America godly again. Amen. All right, guys, love you. Talk to you later. Bye bye.